Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I recently picked up this old pre-built from eBay. We tested it a couple of videos ago and the first time I opened it up I noticed that almost everything inside here was from 2011. The motherboard, power supply, graphics card and of course the i5 2500K CPU. I tested this system without making any physical changes but since then I've had a thought. If this machine is over 10 years old and doesn't seem to have received any upgrades, what about the thermal paste? I didn't repaste the CPU or graphics card before testing it the other day, partly because I had planned on tearing down and rebuilding slash upgrading this system, but we may as well address this now. Repasting the CPU inside an old pre-built is the second most important thing you should do in my opinion, along with cleaning the rest of the machine or removing any dust. The first thing to do is test that it actually works. You should test any secondhand computer you buy before tinkering around with it so that you know there's nothing wrong with it. Our i5-2500K PC has been thoroughly tested previously of course. This meant that it was time to remove the board from the system and see exactly what we were dealing with beneath the stock cooler. Now just as expected the paste under here is a couple of stages away from being dust. I can't say for sure that it's over 10 years old, but it's got that dry and bubbly effect which I've seen many times, mostly in old obsolete office machines. Chances are, no matter the age of the paste, it isn't very effective in its current state. In fact, here are a few tests I ran earlier in the day. I completely reset the CPU to stock and under all core load the max frequency of the 2500K is 3.4GHz. Our max idle temp with the old crusty paste is 54 degrees. When running a Cinebench R23 all core test this reached 75 degrees. Not overly warm and certainly not within throttling territory. I found that after a half hour gaming session the 2500K at the same stock settings maxed out at 71 degrees. Still no throttling to speak of here though, from a performance standpoint it's clearly showing its age. Still the 3GB 1060 was likely causing problems of its own, so there's that. Kind of irrelevant for today's video though. I then upped the clock speed to 4GHz in the BIOS. Not ideal anyway given the stock cooler and during the Cinebench run it wasn't long before we saw over 95 degrees. It still doesn't throttle to be fair but this is not a healthy temperature for this ageing Sandy Bridge legend. But you'd probably have an aftermarket cooler if you planned to do any overclocking with something like this. It was after these tests I filmed the opening shots, including the B-roll of the crusty, dusty paste. Usually I'd recommend cleaning off old paste with isopropyl alcohol, which will leave a nice smooth surface after wiping away any sticky residue. In this case, the paste wasn't sticky and it had just become part of the CPU itself by this point, so it still needed a little bit of scrubbing not before the top layer just crumbled away. Now to be honest I have seen worse, I've removed paste that hasn't even left a mark on a tissue, it's just crumbled away completely. This old stuff must have been doing something but it's time to treat our i5 to a fresh lump of thermal paste. I tend to use this Arctic MX4 stuff, this small tube is less than a fiver and it seems to do an adequate job. I'm not big on making a fuss over thermal paste brands, it seems pretty trivial to me but in the case of our i5 here I could use tomato ketchup and it would produce better results than we have been seeing. Hang on, let me write that down, that sounds like a good idea. After the repaste, I noticed that our max idle temp had dropped to 47, but most of the time it was sitting lower than this. Low 40s, high 30s, that sort of area. Under load, we hit a max temp of 63, down from 75 degrees beforehand. When it came to gaming, the chip remained a lot cooler as well, maxing out at 60 degrees after a half hour gaming session in Cyberpunk. I'm still using an open test bench, so setup conditions will cause variations in temperature of course. This was a pretty decent drop in my opinion considering that we haven't changed the cooler, we're still using the stock one and this got me thinking about the overclocking potential once again. This still isn't the best idea on the stock cooler, but this time when increasing the 2500K speed to 4GHz, the CPU hit 73 degrees under load in the Cinebench multi-test. A pretty massive drop considering it wasn't too far off 100 beforehand. I guess the old stuff really was dry. 
I then thought, well, could we go even higher? Now that our fresh paste is keeping temperatures down, can we overclock the 2500K to say 4.2 gigahertz without upgrading our cooler? Again, it's not the best idea, but it should work, right? Well, that's exactly what I did. I kept the 3 gig 1060 in our system as well and jumped into a few games. As before, the CPU will suffer a bit in some games and I'll push it even further with a better cooler at some point, but let's look at a handful of titles in action and keep an eye on those temps. First of all, then we have Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p with the lowest settings and FSL performance mode for an average of 45 FPS. The percentile lows did suffer a bit as you would expect when using this combination of components, but here the main focus is the temperature of our overclocked i5 and again with the stock cooler we're hitting around 69-70 degrees, somewhere around there, I think I saw it peak at 71 just now. To be honest I think that's pretty good and uh, we definitely have benefited from the paste replacement, that's for sure. The same can be said for Red Dead Redemption 2. As you can see, our CPU is clinging to that 4.2 gigahertz clock speed here, and the temperature is once again getting up towards 70 degrees. This game felt a lot smoother, and our percentile lows were also improved, reading 32 and 25 respectively. The average was 44, so not a bad pairing in this instance, to be honest. Fallout 4 ran even better than that, especially when the frame rate was uncapped at the medium preset with TAA enabled. We saw 94 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 57 and a 0.1% low of 42. Once again, our temperatures were hovering around sort of 65 to 71 degrees at this increased clock speed. Finally then we have The Witcher 3 which is another problematic title in terms of running around those more CPU intensive areas. The four cores of the i5 2500K will suffer in 2024 but once again there were no issues with temperature here and there were no issues with throttling or drops in clock speed anything like that. The temperature stayed around 70 degrees once again. 72 I saw maximum in this case but yeah, I'm glad we replaced that thermal paste because we'd be hitting about 100 if we still had that crusty stuff applied. <laughs> but there we go, replacing CPU thermal paste should be a priority when buying any used pre-built, especially if it's one that hasn't been upgraded in years. Who knows what you might find under the cooler. Be sure to always test any hardware first, even if it's briefly to ensure everything is working as it should before going tinkering around inside your system, uh, but after that get to work scraping off that nasty old dusty stuff and see those temperatures drop. That's all for this one, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.